hello guys welcome to class for today on today's class we'll be looking at 10 small engine tweaks you wish you knew earlier there are some certain things you should do to your generator that at least should make your generator work pending when a technician comes around to properly fix it up for some reason you're using your generator your generator goes off and you want to change your plug there's no plug available there's something you should do to your plug that will still keep your plug working pending when you get another uh spark plug or you may have a generator that you haven't used in a while and for some reason you put the generator on the gen comes on perfectly well but this time it doesn't produce voltage in two seconds there's something you should do that should make your generator produce voltage there are a lot of things we'll be talking about in this particular tutorial that i basically would wish you knew them earlier without wasting much of your time let's dive straight into the video number one tweak let's assume you have a generator you put your generator on your generator refuses to come on and you eventually discover the plug is the reason your generator refuses to come on well you would want to get a new plug right but let's assume in instances where the plug is not available no shop in sight to get the plug what do you do what you should do is to basically get the old plug lose it out of your generator then break the porcelain surrounding how do you break the porcelain surrounding you use your plier to crack it when you crack it open put it back into your generator i guarantee you if plug is the reason your generator refuses to come on the generator at that point will come on there is no two ways about it another trick is this if you have a generator that overflows just like this small generator this two stroke generator let's assume your generator overflows for some reason it doesn't have that fault before anyway but for some reason you put on your foil tab and you discover foil stabs dripping out from the carburetor at the bottom of the carburetor meanwhile this is the same generator you've used for the past months or weeks and it didn't give you that issue one thing you should do at that point in time that will basically save you the stress of calling a technician immediately is to basically put off your foil tap okay put off your foil tap drain out the foil from the bottom here there's a drain plug here it's available in all generators it's available in this two stroke generator it's available in this generator too in this engine too there's a drain plug here it's also available in this huge generator okay there's always a drain plug so basically what you do is to put off your foil tap lose the drain plug allow for it to come out a little bit Return the shock of your generator, put it back to the normal running position when your gen is running where yeah, the shock usually is, put it there, and then then you can just open the foil tap for three to five seconds. Foil drops into your carburetor. At that point, foil drops into your carburetor, you lock the foil tap back, put on your generator. When you put on your generator, guess what? After some time, because this foil tap is locked, you will notice the generator is about to go off. At that point, take this back, open the foil tap a little. You succeeded in stopping your generator from overflowing. It's that simple. Try it out. Try it out. It's going to work. I've done this severally. I've advised a lot of persons via phone calls to do this severally on their generator and it has worked for them perfectly. Number three tweak. When you have a generator and you use your generator constantly and then all of a sudden it starts jerking. It starts fluctuating. It makes uh, an up and down sound. Like it goes up. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Sorry about my sound. But basically you get what I'm talking about. So when you have a generator that particularly does something like that, and of course you know you have fuel in your generator, you have petrol in your generator, you know everything is proper in your generator, the best thing to do at that point in time is to perform just one tweak. Take off this foil jet. If you can see this foil jet, this is a foil jet here. There's a foil jet. Take off that foil jet, clean it up properly. Clean it up properly. Just like I've explained in my other videos. You can go check them out. Clean it up properly. I tell you, I guarantee you, that fluctuation of your generator would stop instantly. So that is how to basically stop your generator from fluctuating. You can do that to this generator, which is 8kV. You can do this even to a two-stroke generator. The foil jet is quite hidden here, but if you have access to, if you understand where to find a foil jet, just like I've explained with that, you can do it with that. You can also do that with this. Okay, this foil jet is hidden as well, but all you just need to do is to take this up. Oh, it's basically not hidden. This is the foil jet. This is the foil jet I'm talking about. Okay, this jet. You take this jet off, clean it properly, and it will work very, very fine. So that is basically how to um, fix that up. Another trick is this. When you put on your generator, your generator that previously was working fine, very perfectly well, and for some reason, you put on this generator this time, and the voltage do not come on, okay? what you need to do there are some generators voltage not coming on could be as a result of many faults avro brush coil have issues the winding could have issues a lot of things but one tweak that has worked several times every day of the week is trying to 
throttle the generator. Throttle your generator. For some generators, it may be as a result of um, the coil becoming weak. Throttle the generator, the voltage will come on and you will see light to your house. So eventually when you see light to your house, you have an idea what could be wrong with your generator. In that case, if you throttle and light comes on in your house, probably your coil could be having little issues. But basically, that week should at least make your generator work for this time being. Another thing you should do for your generator when perhaps your generator refused to produce voltage is this. And this will still happen when someone has kept the generator for a long time. Let's assume a user of a generator, because generators basically are backup generators, right? Let's assume you've kept a generator for six months and you've not used it. At some point, your generator uh, field coil may lose its magnetization, its magnetism. And what do you do at that point? You have to basically feed it with an external uh, voltage. And that is what we call flashing. How do you do this? You basically pick up another generator. You look for the terminals of your generator, the one that doesn't produce voltage, connect the terminals of that generator to the terminals of this generator, and of course, voila, voltage comes in. You disconnect and continue usage. At that point, the generator you use has given the generator that doesn't have voltage before now magnetization, and your generator keeps working on from there. So instead of calling a technician, you will fix it yourself. However, there's something you need to put into consideration. The two generators we have to be on. The generator producing voltage that you are using to feed the one not producing voltage has to be on. The generator collecting the voltage has to be on. Please take note of that. It's very important. Another trick to note is this. Let's assume you've not used your generator in a while or for some reason your generator still refuses to come on even though you previously used it the night before. And then you've checked your plug. You are sure your plug is fantastic, working fine. Of course, how do you know a plug is working fine when it gives you spark? Right? You know that already. I believe you know that already. And then you do not know what the issue is. Though you are suspicious, your carburetor could be the issue. What do you do at that point in time? All you need to do is basically lose out the uh, covering of the carburetor and snuff with foil. You snuff with foil. Okay? This is what you do. You snuff with foil and start the generator. If the generator comes on for some seconds, let's say three seconds, and goes off, then you know you need to service your carburetor. That's one of my best work troubleshooting. I do not have to think and think through before getting to know that this particular part of my generator is faulty for carburetor especially. All I just need to do is to snuff it. And when it comes on, no matter how short it is, if it comes on for three seconds, two seconds and goes off, then I am 100% sure my attention should be focused on the carburetor. At that point, you have to fix your carburetor. Another trick to note is this. When you have your generator that consumes fuel excessively, excessively, maybe... A technician have done several things that he has repaired he has done the bit he could do and for some reason the generator still hasn't worked fine still consumed for let's assume for this kind of generator you use a liter for let's say seven, uh, for let's say 30 minutes that is bad right so one of those things you should do is to basically adjust the fuel consumption ratio and how do you do that you do that with this okay you do that with this this is even tight enough. So this particular generator does not take for it. It's even tight enough. So you do that with this. You try to tighten this to the end and lose it for about two, just two cycles. Two cycles is okay. At two cycles, this generator will never drink your petrol. Let me use that term, drink, because it gulps your petrol. So this is one tweak you need to know. There's a video up on the screen that teaches that extensively. I did, did do a video about it. You can go watch it out, guys. So another thing to do now, when you are faced with challenges on your generator, let's assume your generator is difficult to pull. You pull your generator and then it takes your hand back. Anytime you pull your generator, it takes your hand back. There is a very simple trick for that. And I will show you guys that trick practically now. This is how it works. When you have a generator like this and it pulls your hand, the first point of contact should be your valve. That is all you need to do. You just need to go get access to your valve. You touch the valve. Okay, this gen is very, very okay. Now, if you pull the generator, it's very, very okay. It's not going to be strong at all. But how do I know it's not going to be strong, even though I haven't touched there? It's because I noticed here yeah, it's tight enough. Okay, here yeah, it's tight enough. When you have a generator and you eventually open the generator and then you discover the gap is mush. The gap between the tablet and this end, the spring is mush. 
all you need to do is to adjust the valve so that it's tight enough and you can pull easily there is a video on top of this screen that explains that very well that video explains that some minutes video if you watch that video there is no way you can fix your valve so that is the easiest way to fix that we do not need to drop or pull the or, or the cord of the generator to see if the piston is at top dead center or bottom dead center to basically set your valve just apply the tweak in that video and it will help you with ease another tweak i have always applied in repairs of generator over time is this sometimes some people have generators that smokes excessively by smoking excessively it drinks engine oil okay that is what happened when your piston rinse is bad but at that point some people may not even be close to a technician who would be able to fix your piston and the rinse and at that point what do you do the best thing to do is this because your generator will keep going off some people will call it like i saw a question on my channel where someone said my plug keep dying every day and then one of the reasons your plug will die every day is because your generator smokes okay and when generator smokes the oil coming from the um block the crankcase somehow get access to the top of the piston and that eventually touches the plug which allows the plug to die which kills the plug so if you are faced with that issue where oil keeps coming to the top of your plug and your plug keep dying if you have a generator like this and that happens the best thing to do is this instead of using a long thread which was originally supposed to be used for the generator this time around do not use a long thread uh, plug by long thread plug this is what i mean this is a long thread plug originally a long thread plug is what is used for the generator this time around do not use a long thread plug Inst instead instead use a short thread plug long thread short thread. use a short thread plug this time around when you use a short thread plug oil will not quickly get to your plug so at least you can basically manage your generator depending when you have opportunity or you have a technician around to fix it up if you are new to this channel and you haven't subscribed i honestly do not know what you are waiting for on this channel we try our best to give you the very best of information as a gas small engine ranging from portable generators to lawn mower to chainsaws and a host of them we do believe that this channel is going to be one of the best in terms of small engine repairs in the near future so to make that happen kindly subscribe to us turn on your notification bell so when videos are posted you are among the first to see them and also please do well to like if you don't like youtube will not be in the know that this video is good enough for people who have viewed them so just like and show youtube that well you enjoyed the video do well to drop message in the comment section as well that is very important so we can communicate as family another trick of note is this this is very very technical highly technical in fact some persons would never really advise anyone to do this if you can't do it don't do it if you are not going to follow the various rules i will give on this particular trick just quit this video right now <laughs> okay <laughs> all right uh, when you have a generator that perhaps goes off and it looks like there is no engine oil but in fact there is engine oil in the generator what do you do at that particular point in time okay what basically happens when you have engine oil and your generator still goes off like there is no en engine oil sometimes it jerks like your generator plug is faulty you know when your generator plug is about dying off it jerks so sometimes it makes that kind of jerking sound and in fact you think it's a plug you change the plug and the plug will still be very much all right at that point you feel the oil is bad you change the oil still have the same issue there is one particular tweak you should do and that tweak is having access to the oil sensor i'm, I'm coming i got to push this and show you guys properly okay having access to the oil sensor this is the sensor and this is the switch how does this work this basically allows your generator to go off on its own when there is no engine oil. That is how it works. No two ways about it. So when you have a generator that has new engine oil, brand new engine oil, and then it still performs the same um, jerking sound, what you need to do at that point is to basically disconnect the oil sensor from the oil switch. Okay? this in fact will allow your generator to run smoothly smoothly but there's a tweak 
when you disconnect this what you should notice is that your generator will knock anytime the engine oil finishes from your generator so instead of your generator going off you have you, the generator would not go off this time around it will just knock instantly so what you should always do is anytime you want to put on your generator kindly take cognizance of the crankcase and check if there's oil in your generator so if for example i am to do this anytime i want to on my generator i will basically check if there's still engine oil in my generator so that is one thing you must always do but if you know deep down that you can't go through all this stress of checking if there is engine oil in your generator i advise you to please leave this switch in for those that don't know the sensor comes from the crankcase and then this down to this um, switch the switch have two wires for most generator it has a black and yellow wire you disconnect the black the yellow wire coming from the switch so that is it basically so guys that is it basically i believe these tweaks are going to help you in running your generator um daily if you've loved this video like i've always said please do well to subscribe and share this video to friends and family let me make an offer to you guys i have this engine for sale i have this engine for sale there is no price on it yet that's because i want to somehow gift it to our one of our subscribers if you're a subscriber on this channel the best thing you can do is to come get this engine this engine is yours for any price you can pay so that depends on you now just think the price you think you can pay for this and i'll gift you this the boys in your court guys till meeting our next class it's goodbye from us take care